Welcome everyone for the most boring, less exciting chess games in World Championship match ever. Like seriously ever. Like looking at this match so far, I mean we had eight games. Okay, let's discover a bit quickly. Game one, repetition on move 10 was the most exciting game so far. Game two, game two, okay, repetition on move 20 in a bit. Mm, game three, yeah, none got better position, actually didn't push. I thought that, by the way, that was, that was the game that I thought the match is completely over. Like before that, I thought the match is over. I had it completely, he cannot win. Game four, he just an unblundered on move 15. And okay, actually played quite well defending. Game five, nothing, nothing, a little bit more than nothing. And at some point, an unmade mistake. Game six, well, look at the description of game five. Game seven, we are going to see here. Why, why even to bother? Game eight, well, let's wrap the match and go to the next one. It's unbelievable, this match. Like, seriously, there was not one game, one game that, that one player at some point really got more than half a point advantage. Like, really. I mean, Anand blundered and he was much worse in game four. Carson played wrong and he was worse, worse. I mean, probably it wasn't a very big advantage. <coughs> and maybe at some point it was very big advantage, but it was clearly in Anand's favor. Other than that, it looked like someone that's just have heart attack. And at some point Anand, like, you know, like just fell off a cliff in game 5-6. So that's the world champion that we have, basically. Like someone that is playing ping pong. And instead of doing something sophisticated, the, the world champion we're going to have. You know, this is the net. We turn the ball, we turn the ball, we turn the ball. Not making mistake. After 10,000 returns, his opponent will make some mistake and he will win. So, but it's, it's great. So we are going to have this uh, world champion, Carlsen. It's, I'm so excited. Okay, the interesting part about this game, I can tell you that I was looking at this game, and if I hadn't, if I hadn't seen the score of this match, I said it, but let's say I would uh, say exactly the same thing as Kasparov. Pretty much I, I said, like, you look at this match, if you have never seen, and you think that white is leading plus two and needs draws. Because Anand is playing with white, and it seems like he's so happy getting solid, quiet, nothing position out of the opening. And Kasparov said, well, you want to win, so you're playing the most solid line. You're playing Carlsen, dot, dot. So, OK. I, I, by the way, I'm in the camp since game one that Anand should have played d4. I think it's, it's kind of history now that he played already four games e4, but he, he had to play d4 for the match. I, I wonder why, why he played d3, uh, sorry, why he played e4 and not d4. Tonight we're going to have game nine. Maybe he's going to play d4, or maybe he just gave up the match. Okay, so we are having some sort of the Berlin defense. Um, in previous game, we've seen this line. Well, this is game four where there was just this big blunder. Game six was similar stuff with d3, but no take. So here he took, and I said game six because Anand had white in game six and seven. He switched the colors. Okay, I mean, my point, I mean, I see. Pretty much same people that were here in previous lectures. And they can testify, and the same as Ben and the YouTube, that very, very early into the match, I said that the number of games that Anand is going to win in the match is going to be zero. Very early. I've, I've, I mean, I actually I thought this, I thought this before the, the match, but after the third game, I was here saying, no, not going to win one. He's not even close to that one just by the way it went. And so for me, plus one for Carlsen or plus whatever, doesn't matter. Anand is not going to win one. And the way he's playing here, you want to beat Carlsen in this position? I don't think so. Knight d2. OK, there have been actually quite many games in recent years uh, um, in this line. Actu actually, in the last year, there were many, many games. Ben, I will ask you to stop it for half a minute. Right? I'll, I'll just open my chest base. Can you edit it? Yeah. yeah. Because I actually have this analyzed. Okay. Just. 
we will. So to be able to fill an hour, you know, we need we need to at least be able to show something. switch something I automatically take that out okay so if I start like dancing and jumping and this I'll probably put that in okay <coughs> oh I see yeah so at, at, at least we can tiny bit discuss whatever we're gonna have here okay okay Like we've said, many, many games in recent, uh, well, let's say just the last year in this line, not to make it too heavy here, I have it on just based on the other computer, and we can start with Queen E2. You know, Topalov against Bakro played in the Grand Prix in Saloniki, Greece, this year, like this was played six months ago, six and a half. Basically, to understand this position, you know, and we, we let's use this for tiny bit strategy and learning chess, because the match, I, I I cannot make myself say anything exciting about it. So, okay, White gave his light colored bishop. He gave his light colored bishop, and he has all his central pawn on light squares. That's very logical. That's the right way it should be. White most likely would like to have a break with the move f4 at some point. We might see the knight somehow making its way to f5 in some versions, but most likely this move f4 is reasonable. Some, some versions d4. I mean, well, white is not going to win having one pawn crossing the fourth rank. Black's very logical play, almost automatic, is to play c5, so then he's controlling d4, and then where is this knight? Where where is this knight going? The knight on f6, d7, and then what? I mean, if it's on d7, what it's doing on d7? Just blocking the bishop. <laughs> but it's actually correct. He's going to d7. The knight should be on e6 or c6, controlling those squares. It's so logical that black wants maximum power on the dark squares. <laughs> Because he already has his bishop that's doing a lot on the light squares. So in the game that we just mentioned, Topalov Bakro, okay, this was played, bishop d6, knight c3, c5, g3. Idea, I don't like this g3 so much, but the idea is to be able to have some knight h4. No discovered ideas, no knight take e4 in any version, but just looks like it's weakening the squares too much. Black is very, very principal in his play. <coughs> and objectively, OK, I, I think I already tiny bit prefer black here. This pawn is weak. Some squares here. Bishop is 6 coming. I mean, OK, uh, black is very OK allowing white to take this bishop. He has those dark. Those pawns on the dark squares that are very, 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 very pretty. By the way, si anyone has a question at any point, like just please say yes. Which game is this? Th that was a quick question. This is well, game seven from the World Championship. Anand is white. We, he switched on game after game six. He was white in game six. And, but this, the, the position that we were seeing was from Topalov Bakro this year. So this was a version of Queen E2. Anand himself and Carlsen played like <coughs> Bazillion, that would be a decent uh, uh, number, games this year in this line. Like, for example, Anand against Nidic, actually 2009. This is actually very, very similar to what happened in the game with Carlsen. Castle, bishop g4, h3, take, take, knight d7. Okay, basically. Nothing for white. I mean, black is just okay. It's going to go knight f86. The double pawns are not really of any importance. It's actually important to understand where, where, when the double pawns are important. Let's just right now see. 
we ha you have those pawns against those. Okay, they are holding them. When when is it going to make a difference? When can White say, okay, I've got something, and we are going to see how the game went? And I nothing. Where you can say you have something when you manage to exchange the D pawn for Black's <coughs> E pawn. For example, okay, let's hypothetically play this. All right, this, okay, just for the fun of it. Okay, now White can at least claim, say, hey, I have majority on the king side. I have four against three. Even this is not like, you know, like huge big party, but you can at least have some idea of claiming that you have something to play because those four really are not doing much more than those three. I mean, those positions are kind of considered like, I don't know, half a pawn for white in, in some way because no, not very easy for black to create a pass pawn with, I mean, kind of impossible in many ways to create a pass pawn with those. So this is why whites sometimes want to play d4, not, not that easy. But this game was, was a draw. By the way, speaking about recent games, a month, a month ago, a month and a half ago actually, in the Grand Prix in Paris, Nakamura played white against Fresine, one of the top French players. And instead of castle, once again, we had seen the move, actually, sorry, castle, h3. Bishop e6. Of course, the pawn cannot be taken here, right? Because of constantly queen d4, right? Constantly queen d4, and f2 and e5 are just, just that's it. So the pawn cannot be taken. Okay, there were several, several big, I mean, all the big names, all the big names, no, not several. Bishop e6, okay. Um, queen e2, knight d7, same idea. We, we really, the knight, the knight on f6 is really bad. Because you cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot go here. So the knight on f6 is really bad. You want to move it. And d7 is usually the square. Bishop e3, f6. Yeah, for example, here in this game, let, let's see what Nakamura played. Take, take. He, he, he made effort to play exactly the idea that we suggested, but like I said, even that is not such a big party. Castle, castle, king b8, d4. Okay, maybe white is tiny better here, but even that wasn't that easy. There are some still pieces on the, heavy pieces on the board. Maybe if white exchanged everything, he can claim tiny bit something, but if Nakamura couldn't get anything here, I'm not going to claim to get more than he did in the position. And okay, many, many, many more lines. We can continue for a long time. I'll just mention, for example, Castle right here in this position was Anand with White against Caruana in Tal Memorial 2013. So it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big surprise for anyone to see this game. I mean, I can mention, all right, Blitz, Blitz and Normal from the Norway, Anand Karyak in 2013, Karasen Karyak in 2012, Anand Kramnik Zurich 2013, Anand Kramnik 2012, Anand Hammer 2013, and so on and so on. So basically, they are playing a lot this line. Very, very difficult, you know, to say, hey, someone has a positive score. Carlsen played this with white pieces against Bakro in Bill 2012. Carlsen played this with the white pieces against Aronian. So you have enough, enough, enough Anand Carlsen games here. And once again, you know, me from the outside, you know, just doing this big commentary here for you, thinking, if you're minus two in a match, don't you need to come up with something that is 
not as standard as possible with something surprising. Well, I can only quote Kasparov that said exactly what many are thinking. Anand is acting like he is the one leading the match. Knight bd2, bishop g4, castle is in many of the other games. h3. This, this is interesting. Carlson played here a move that I believe is quite a novelty. He played bishop h5. He played bishop h5. Ta take was played in Adams against Fresine. We mentioned him before. It was played in 2012. OK, the game went like this. Black, black played queen f6, maybe maybe castle and f6 is a possibility. I'm, I like the pawn on f6, we've seen it in many of the games before. Okay, I, I thought that maybe f4 is, if white can get f4 he might be better here. Actually, he played a bit different. Okay, maybe got something, maybe not. He won, a a Adams won with the white pieces. but. Maybe maybe Anand thought that he had something here, but it was Carlsen that played bishop bishop h5. That kind of look questionable, maybe, or at least uh, raising an eyebrow, because we kind of know that you don't want to have the bishop on g6 when this is the pawn structure that White has. It's like. I guess the reason that he did play that, allow himself, is because he hasn't castled yet. Black. So if g4, I guess black has some thoughts about h5 and some dynamic play on the, queen's, on the king side in some situation. Uh, take is again impossible. Take is again impossible. But I think... I think the g4 should have been played. I think I think that again, you want to play somewhat complicated. You 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 want to get into some territory that is, you know, that you have more chances to score. I I, I think g4 is the move to play. Well, and I'm played knight f1, which is super duper logical. Black played knight d7, which we have seen many, many, many times. Knight g3, take, take. g6, bishop e3. Okay. So he here is the position. Uh, how similar is that position to? Nakamura Fresine. Quite similar. I mean, okay, black, the, the structure is the same, the idea of white the same. In the other position, Nakamura had uh, two knights, and black had a knight and a light color bishop. But let's, uh, let's assume the bishop are being exchanged. It is like in the other game, knight and bishop will be traded. Does white have something here? Ah, not very easy. I'm looking, I'm looking at the break with. Uh, let's say if d4 is a possibility. And it seems it's not so, because something like this, and the knight might get in trouble, because the knight right now is tied to defending e4. But e4 will have constant pressure, and ideas such as h4, sorry, h5, h4, are not very easy to, to deal with. I mean, after capture here, I can show this line. Capture, captured Mr. Houdini himself and no other. Thinking that black is actually somewhat better in this position. Because the idea will be to take on d4, knight to c5. The knight on g3 cannot move. And h5, h4 is coming. Black is... Can play h4? White? Yeah. yeah, but okay, but then you have one other weakness to worry about. 
For example, let's say that I take, take, and play this. You see, this, this is going to take some attention from you. Okay, but but you will have but this pawn will just be weak over there, because then I let's say then I will move my knight. H how are you going to move your h rook to d1 after you've already played h4? You're, it's taking it some attention from you, right? Taking some resources, and that's basically the thing. If we get rid of all the heavy pieces right now, let let's go to the end of it. If we get rid of all the pieces, all the pieces, everything, probably white is winning. I mean, this is just a winning pawn endgame for white. We get rid of all the rooks, minor pieces, queens, this is winning pawn endgame for white. Because black's four cannot, cannot create a pass pawn. Queen is three here. Yeah, I guess you can. Okay, I, I will go with my f3. Can I play just wondering something like this maybe? But you will have knight c3. I, 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 this is correct idea. You want to regroup yourself this way, but uh, it should not allow you. Okay, let me take, take, and go knight c5 right away. In this move? Maybe this. Queen if I check, maybe che well check. You can go to. You can go to no check. You'll have some. Maybe you can go to C one. Yeah, actually, I like this idea of yours. I mean, at least principally, it's really addressing what we are speaking. You want to get F three. So what should I play here? Yeah, I think taking knight c5 is reasonable. I'm thinking also about bishop b6. But this idea probably looks logical. Let's see. Mr. Julian, no wonder you made me thinking big time. You are stronger than Houdini. That's, that's Houdini's best move, queen e3. No, it's, it's because there... And now he's saying h5, which we suggested, or b6. So let's look at the line that we looked, h5, and you play f3, and then bishop d6. But OK, we are very much in a territory that we looked at. Only one move that's probably a bit better than what I played. I mean, this all played, maybe, maybe this move. So the knight can have some, some ideas like this, or c5. The knight on c5 I played was not that great. But OK. I, if white will manage to consolidate, he'll be very happy. The thing is that probably he cannot. In the game, Anand didn't believe that he can play with knight on g3, so he made the effort to bring the knight. I mean, but, but you played very well. I mean, just the fact that you played queen e3 and f3 means that you really understood, OK, h5, h4 is serious. <coughs> All right. Rook he8. OK, he wants to fight against d4, right? So. After d4, the e4, the e4 pawn is under attack. Well, that's the big idea in this position. So king b1. Okay. Just h4. I, I mean, I thought that h5 looks kind of automatic reply, but somehow I like it maybe tiny less in view of 
And then one day, white very soon one day, white maybe, if he can push g4, let's say hypothetically, if he can push g4, okay, he has something to play for. I mean, wh white, white really, white has less than zero weaknesses. I mean, he put his pieces under the board. So, <laughs> like seriously, it's like, it's like looking at like all those, uh, looking at the position. Somehow it reminds me of, uh, you know, a thousand stories, you know, a night and night, like Arabic tales and all those, like about some people that, you know, hidden their heart somewhere on an eagle. In the, like it cannot be found. But okay, but you also don't get anything. Like I'm looking at the position and think, okay, wh where, where is the weak spot for white? No, okay, I mean, this is not really weak. So really white has, I mean, and this is the middle game, zero weaknesses, nothing, nothing. Black now has tiny bit the G6 one. And Carlsen is, uh, I, I think, just played as simple as possible. Like zero weaknesses. Okay, king b7. Okay, take. I was thinking, you know, take with the pawn sometimes makes sense. But, Carl, but Anand already had uh, experience in game six with those double pawns that he lost with white. I mean, okay, in the other game, Carlsen managed to play c4 and provoke this weakness here, e4, but yeah, probably nothing here. He took like this. I mean, this is his idea. Okay, so he wants to play f4, f4 or d4, something with the pawns. Basically, he, he wants to be able to get something that he can play against those double pawns, but he can't. a5, why? Just, just a decent move, going to the 7th rank, go away from the 7th rank. I mean, it's really, uh, you know, I find it very bizarre that you're the world champ, you're minus two. I kept saying it, and that's what you play. You didn't play bad, but okay. F4. Yeah, exchanging the rooks. So let's see what happened. Of course, D4, queen takes E4. You see, so white got nothing. I mean, without any huge gigantic analysis, why white got nothing? Because you have those four against, and, and you cannot create anything. If we can have pushed the pawn somewhere else, okay, white might be speaking about something, but black king is super safe and, okay, look, d4, nothing and apparently they are not just the world champion and the highest rated player in the world but they also show that they are extremely creative in finding repetitions like the repetitions in this game have been tremendous so really I don't know if I made this game any interesting or whatever I, uh, I think I made it the most that I could so if this, if you thought that this game was boring, <coughs> well, game eight is uh, much more exciting. <laughs>